just for the record, people, yes, Mayans still exist. The empire ended, but the people are still fully alive and well. Just throwing that out there, okay? All right? It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. We are back in the Latin world, and this time we jump into the land shrouded in ancient wonder and really good tamales. Moving on. Fun little side note, the word Guatemala comes from the Mayan Nahuatl word meaning the place of many trees. Although some might say it also comes from the word Guatemala, which means the mountain vomiting water. First of all, Guatemala is located in Central America, bordered by four other countries and both the Pacific Ocean to the southwest and the Caribbean Sea to the east. The country is divided into 22 departments with the capital Guatemala City located in the Guatemala department, making it a triple division title. It's like, hey guys, I live in Guatemala, Guatemala, Guatemala. The majority of the country's population lives inland along the volcanic Sierra Madre mountain belt extending all the way to the Caribbean along Puerto Barrios. Technically, the three largest cities are Guatemala City, Mixco, and Villa Nueva. However, those three are kind of like part of the same metropolitan area along Guatemala City, so the largest cities outside of that domain would be Quetzaltenango and Huehuetenango. Uh-oh, did you just say? No, it's pronounced Huehuetenango. Too late! Ah! However, the only two international airports are actually Guatemala City's La Aurora International and Flores' Mundo Maya International. By the way, speaking of Quetzaltenango, Man, doesn't that word sound nice? Quetzaltenango. A long time ago, the city also known as Xela used to be part of the Los Altos state that almost became a country back when the Central American Federation broke up. Remember the El Salvador episode? Essentially, Mexico and Guatemala just split it up amongst themselves. To this day, Guatemala still has a kind of lingering but not really taken too seriously dispute with Belize in which they believe that, you know, Belize should be theirs or at least everything south of the Cebun River. Even Guatemalan passports show a map with the delineated line along the border with Belize showing that they still kind of have a slight persisting disagreement. The busiest roadway would be the CA-1 highway that traverses the country and melds into the CA-8 highway onto the west that gives them access to Mexico and El Salvador. This road is also part of the Pan-American Highway. If you follow it all the way north, you can eventually reach Alaska. And if you take it south, eh, just watch the Costa Rica episode. I'm already reaching previous episode reference overload. Now, you might be thinking, if Flores isn't one of the top three largest cities, why does it have an international airport? Well, the reason is because tourism. Flores is all the way up north in the Petén department and home to all the ancient Mayan sites. Guatemala, as we will soon find out, is the Mayan capital of Central America. People come from all over just to get a glimpse of the ancient sites. The most famous one being Tikal and other notable sites like Ixcún, El Mirador, Nacpe, San Bartolo, and Yasha. These sites are like the economical gold mines for the country. Otherwise, other notable sites might include places like the colorful cemetery of Chichicas Tenango, Chichi for short. Side note, there's a lot of Tenangos in Guatemala. Heads up, it just means place of. There's also Antigua, which used to be the capital before the earthquake in the 1700s damaged much of the city, located between three volcanoes within view of the beautiful iconic Volcan Aqua and the beautiful Iglesia de San Andres de Shekul. To be honest though, the landscape in itself blows away any man-made structure. Now let's discuss that. <laughs> Okay, so now we've already covered Belize, Costa Rica, and El Salvador, so by now you kind of probably get the gist of how Central America works. Tropical rainforests with cool animals, like where the national animal the Quetzal can be found, and beaches with various fruit trees and an occasional volcano. Done! Well, okay, there's a little more than that for Guatemala. First of all, when it comes to their land makeup, the Pacific Coast lowlands in the south rise to the volcanic Sierra Madre mountain chain that transects the country, then the land descends into the forested northern lowlands, including the narrow Caribbean coast. Guatemala has over 20 volcanoes, three of which are active, Fuego, Pacay, and Santiago, although it's disputed that others might have the potential to activate again. You never know with dormant volcanoes. They're kind of like that one bipolar friend that post-liminarily flips out on you. Hey man, is it cool if I borrow your pen? Sure thing, bud. Ah! Jeez, do you ever have your own pants? Speaking of which, the extinct Tahumulco volcano is the highest peak in Guatemala at over 4,200 meters tall. The Motagua River being the longest one in the country flowing eastward into the Gulf of Honduras. The lake with the largest surface area would be Lake Isabal. However, Lake Atitlan is the deepest lake in all of Central America going all the way down 340 meters. In contrast, Isabal is only 18 meters. Furthermore, some of Guatemala's towns are built on low density volcanic pumice stone, which if not reinforced, erodes quickly and add on top of that, weak pipelines and slight seismic activity, and BAM, you have a sinkhole extravaganza. Coffee, bananas, and sugar make up the largest exports with textiles not far behind. Although sweatshop controversy has always been a hot button topic amongst retailers like Liz Claiborne, Oshkosh, and Tracy Evans. Hey, you like chocolate? Thank Guatemala. The Mayans in ancient times pretty much invented it. Hey. The Olmecs made it way before the mines did. Eh, you guys have like popcorn, rubber, tequila, and color TV. Just let Guatemala have this one. 
Otherwise, top Guatemalan dishes include things like pepian, hocon, mixtas, ilachas, and of course, the national dish tamales that comes in hundreds of different forms, some of the most popular ones being colorados, negros, chuchitos, and paches. Guatemala is also one of the top jade-producing countries in the world as numerous deposits can be found along the Motagua River. Other notable natural spots might include places like Las Fuentes Georginas Hot Springs, the Semuk Champay Turquoise Pools and Caves, the famous diving caves at Laguna Lechua, Crater Azul, Laguna Magdalena, and Laguna Brava, and the captivating Salto de Chilasco Waterfall. Getting into those places might require a guide though, and who better to take you along than the actual people who live here? Now, as the most populous country in Central America with strong indigenous roots, Guatemala has quite a reputation on its hands. First of all, Guatemala has about 16 million people and it has the fastest growing population in the Western Hemisphere. About 40% of the country identifies as Amerindian, coming from various Mayan tribes like the Quiche, Cachiquel, Mam, and Quechi. Another 40% identifies as Mestizo or mixed with Amerindian. About 18% claim to be white and the remainder is made up of mostly Asians and Arabs. They also use the Quetzal as their currency, they use the American Type A outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. After Bolivia, Guatemala has the largest percentage per population of full indigenous Amerindian people out of all the countries in the Americas. Mayan culture exudes throughout Guatemala, whether it's through the colorful clothing, costumes, masks, festivals, and musical performances. Today there are 21 recognized and protected Mayan languages and people groups found in Guatemala and it can be interesting walking from a Spanish town into a Mayan village. Suddenly you hear a bunch of sh, tl, ch, sounds. Speaking of which, Spanish in Guatemala is heavily influenced by Mayan languages and vernacular as well. For example, in some parts of Guatemala, instead of saying niño, they might say ishto. Instead of saying cabeza, some might say sheka. And keep in mind, not every Mayan language is the same. For example, if you arrive in the Yucatec Maya region, you'll realize they're actually speaking a tonal language. For example, ek means star, but ek means dirty. By the way, I probably butchered that last one. If you're a native Yucatec Mayan speaker, and if you watch Geography Now, and if you understand the English English and this, now forget it, who am I saying? There's nobody like that who watches this show. Now, ancient Mayan culture is fascinating to say the least. They have their own writing and numerical system made of logograms, sometimes referred to as Mayan hieroglyphs. For the time they lived in, they also had a very advanced mathematical system with the concept of zero already existing. They also had an interesting concept of time being circular rather than linear, so they would tally up days on two separate calendar cycles that would repeat every 52 years. And then on top of that, they would add a gargantuan cycle calendar that lasted 5,126 years, which was perceived, by archaeologists at least, to be the end cycle of the Earth. And that's how this happened. Now, many of you Guatemalan geography peeps mentioned in your emails that it's sad, but today there is still some disenfranchisement and discrimination against the Mayan population in Guatemala. In addition, literacy rates are typically lower and poverty rates are higher amongst them as well. Even though strides have been made to cooperate on both sides, an undertone of social tension still lingers. In addition, you also have a few black Garifunas like the ones mentioned in the Belize episode that speak their own dialect and live predominantly on the Caribbean coast. Guatemalans are predominantly Catholic, however, each area kind of has its own flavor of Catholicism with a Mayan flair. For example, some locals in the Western Highlands offer chickens for sacrifice, reminiscent of the Mayan roots. When it comes to Catholic-based festivals though, Guatemalans party hard, and they take Easter and Holy Week very seriously. Especially in the town of Antigua, where you can find the famous alfombras, or carpets, slowly and meticulously handcrafted by colored sawdust and flowers adorning the streets going on for blocks and blocks. The longest one and Guinness World Record holder was created in Guatemala City that extended for over two kilometers. Oh, and All Saints Day has this awesome, equally colorful kite celebration where they lift these things up in the air. Nonetheless, Guatemalan history is riddled with controversy and drama as well. In a nutshell, this guy and his brother were the first Europeans to stop by in 1524, went into numerous battles, and eventually subjugated the area under Spanish rule. Fast forward, they declare independence from Spain in 1821, then again from the Mexican Empire two years later, and then this whole thing was a country for 16 years, and then it broke up in 1839, then there were some confusing years, a few regimes, a revolution, a 36 year long civil war, and finally peace accords in 1996, which brings us to the Guatemala we have. Today. Finally, I asked you Guatemalan geography peeps to give me a list of some of the most famous Guatemalans throughout history, and here are some of the names you guys mentioned. Ricardo Arjona, Gabi Moreno and Pedro Cuevas, Oscar Isaac, Miguel Angel Asturias, and Rigoberto Menchu, Aldo Castaneda, Rodolfo Robles, Carlos Merida, Efraín Resinos, Mateo Flores, Domingo Betancourt, Manuel Colom Argueta, Eric Parondo, Juan Jose Arevalo, and Jacobo Arbenz. Cool, look those people up. In the meantime, 
though there were like three major regimes and a revolution with a civil war, Guatemala was still never short of having friends. First of all, Guatemala is one of only 22 countries that gives full recognition to Taiwan as a state. Taiwan has been reaching out to Guatemala for decades. Taiwan funds things like highways, construction, and buildings. Also, tons of South Koreans have been immigrating for some reason, so there's that. They have a weird love-hate relationship with Mexico. Mexico sees Guatemala as kind of like their weird southern jungle cousins, and Guatemala sees them as kind of like their snobby, uppity cousins that look down on them. Nonetheless, in the end, they will always have each other's backs. Just don't confuse them for each other. The US does the biggest business. They alone make up a third of all imports and makes 40% of their Guatemalan exports. Plus, tons of Guatemalans live abroad in the US and have dual citizenship. When it comes to their best friends, however, every Guatemalan I talked to more or less concluded upon two countries, El Salvador and Honduras. Now, Guatemala generally gets along with most of the other Central American states, except they kind of have a little suspicious eye at Costa Rica for not joining the Parlacen. However, Salvadorans and Hondurans are kind of like the scrappy, loud little brothers that they love to hang out with. I mean, sure, some drug trafficking cartel work might be lingering in the shadows, but hey, they're constantly enjoying life and sharing stories while playing poker and drinking shots of Quetzalteca. In conclusion, Guatemala is an incredibly colorful country, strong in Mayan roots. Just make sure you're standing on solid ground before the sinkholes swallow you up. I'm kidding. Stay tuned. Guinea is coming up next.